In the final video of this section, I want to address the complaint that, but technique is so boring, I don't want to practice it. So this might be you as a beginner. It's so boring to practice scales. This might be you as a professional. I know my scales. Why am I going to bother practicing technique? Like I know that stuff. So my answer to this is that technique practice can be a great vehicle for working on other skills. So once you know your scales, for instance, you can use them as a vehicle for working on things that you want to get better at in general in your playing. So to give an example from my own life, my own technique practice, a couple years ago, I wanted to get better at polyrhythms, two against three, three against four, that kind of thing. So I would walk in one subdivision. So maybe I'd walk in eighth notes and I'd play my scale in triplets. So I was working on that skill. I used my scales to do that because I've known my scales for decades. I don't have to think about how to play a scale. So I could have all my attention focused on this polyrhythm skill that I was trying to get better at versus trying to work on polyrhythms in some context where I don't really know the notes very well. So I have to think about the notes and the polyrhythm. Much easier is to just use something I already know really well, scales, and do it there. And because there's so many scales, I can just go around the circle of fifths. I get to try this out in lots of different keys. I've also used scales many times to work on different bow strokes. So for instance, me as a violist, ricochet doesn't come up that often. Every time I have to play ricochet, it's a little rusty because I haven't used it in a couple of years and I need to review it. So I just put it in my scales and I do my scales in a ricochet bowing. Um, I often want to get better at playing faster. So for instance, if I want to get better at playing really fast, really quietly, because it's hard to get clear articulation sometimes when it's really quiet, maybe I'll practice all my scales at a really fast tempo at a very, very soft dynamic. So anything that you want to get better at in your just overall technique or your overall musicianship, you can put into the context of your scales and your arpeggios, work on it that way, and then make the technique practice also more interesting. You can also use your technique practice to work on musicianship and expressivity, musicality. Instead of just playing your scale up and down, figure out what do I want to get better at expressively? Maybe you feel like, mm, I don't do a great job with big dynamic range in my pieces. So maybe you're going to play your scales. Maybe you'll start pianissimo, do a crescendo to fortissimo, and then diminuendo again to pianissimo. Or maybe you want to get better at subito dynamics. Um, so you're going to play, you know, two or three notes pianissimo, and then the next two or three notes fortissimo, and then back to pianissimo. Whatever you want, you know, you can pick whatever dynamic contour that you want. Or maybe you want to get better at expressing different characters. So you're going to play your scale sounding really angry or really joyful or something like that. Anything that you want to get better at musicality wise, expressivity wise, you can use your scales to, to portray that. There's an infinite number of ways that you can use scales, arpeggios, technique practice to improve other skills at the same time. So if you feel like technique practice is boring, it's pointless, like I'm not getting anything out of this, I'm just going through the motions, I'd like to invite you to think about it in a more creative way either by thinking more specifically about what do I really want to improve in this scale, like I was talking about in the first video, really hone in on what can't I do and work on that. Or maybe you feel like your scales are fine. Okay, now think creatively about how can I use this to improve other skills that I want to get better at in my overall musicianship and, and technique. So hopefully these videos have given you new ideas for thinking about practicing technique and will inspire you to change up your technique routine, practice in a different way, and just conceptualize what you're doing in a different way that helps you more.